Welcome to Adobe Live. Happy Monday. I hope you all had a lovely weekend. It is so good to see you all in chat. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Annika, General Kenobi. Sam is our moderator today. Thank you, Sam Peterson. Anna, welcome. Hello, everyone. Um, today, we are actually joined by the amazing artist, character artist, um, Chris Blackstock. How are you doing today, Chris? Good. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. It's so great to have you. Can't wait to see uh, what we're working on today. Be but me before too. we, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's always fun to figure out what you're working on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll but before we get to Chris's intro, um, please, if you are over on the Adobe, uh, I'm sorry, before you, <laughs> if you are over on the YouTube Adobe channel, um, please come over to the Behance chat because that is our main chat. And if you would like any questions answered, please head over there to behance.net slash Adobe Live. Then we can be able to hang out with you and answer any questions that you have for Chris. Um, as well as if you would like to check out the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, that was hosted by Voodoo Val right before this stream at 9 a.m. And then after this stream, if you'd like to check out the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, that will be hosted by Claudie, that will be directly after us. Um, so yeah, if you would like to stick around for a little bit while we uh, do some awesome character design, Chris, I'm gonna hand it over to you so you can give a little intro to your artwork and maybe what we're gonna be working on today. Well, cool. sounds great. Hi, everybody. Chris Blackstock um, streaming out of Pasadena today, um, lovely Southern California. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just start off by showing you guys my Instagram might be the quickest way to kind of introduce some of my artwork. Um, I've worked in several different industries, um, worked for a while um, in the music industry. Um, did stuff for uh, Kill Paris, um, was electronic producer, Skrillex, um, the M Machine. There's a one I did for my buddy. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's see if I can. It's a little bit bigger. I don't know if it is. There we go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that a little bit better? Yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, so yeah, uh, did, did a lot of that, um, kind of like some motion graphics, um, some of the my fine art stuff that I would do with uh, an actual epilogue laser cutter and so wow. yeah, and acrylics, that was really fun. But yeah, I've been doing a lot more character design lately. Um, been doing more stuff for small animation projects. Um, so a lot of these little guys and you can check out my page at uh the underscore black stock if you guys want to check out more of that um but yeah there's a uh, probably the most recent one that i did it was a fun one. Oh, very cool i love that <laughs> yeah I, I do i play a lot of lego with my son he's <laughs> four and a half so i kind of was like gosh but you know i i have a big imagination but i mm -hmm. you know i can only think so much about how big it was when I was his age. So just try to yeah. try to capture that. Very cool. But, yeah. Also, you guys, I think, uh, Chris, wh wh when were you on a last uh, for Adobe Live? Maybe like a month or so ago? Um, that was when, yeah, yeah. We, he created this awesome character. He was creating like um, kind of like almost like alien zoo creatures, uh, which was really cool. If you guys want to check that out, uh, please feel free to do so. That was a really cool stream. Yeah, and this today's stream will kind of tie into that. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the style of it, but um, just kind of referencing it's good. We're doing a, a wildlife biologist who's kind of studying otherworldly creatures oh, cool. on other planets. So you could you could kind of tie these in together. I thought that'd be fun. 
That sounds awesome. Can't wait to see what uh, what comes out of that. Definitely. So let's see. Yeah, I guess we should get started. Yeah, for sure. Okay. This out of the way. Hello, welcome everyone coming into chat. Hey, Sean, welcome. Hi, General Kenobi. Good to see you guys. Bruce, Andreas, George, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so today, um, I just kind of wanted to go over um, kind of like the day one. This is what, these are my goals. You know, we'll see if we get to all of these. Uh, mm -hmm. Good thing is, is I got time in between tomorrow and I can kind of make up some ground if I need to. Sure. But um, we'll try to just go over uh, the sketching, um, silhouettes and shapes, just kind of doing some shape exploration, kind of see what our, our uh, biologist is going to look like. Um, and kind of after we get like a basic design, we're going to go over his uh, kind of clothing. Sorry, I think my mic is slowly drooping. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Such so um, is life of a streamer. Yes. <laughs> um, and then we'll probably go over uh, like his, you know, what he's wearing, his clothing, uniform, uh, his tools, what he needs. Um, and I'll kind of uh, cue you in on the kind of references I'm using. And, um, and then from there, just try to get to a, a finished sketch and hopefully um, a finished design by the end. And if we got extra time, maybe do some color blocking and um, see if we can start doing some acting moments. Awesome. That sounds great. So, all right. Cool. Let's get started. Sweet. Let's see. So today I'm using... Um, in my notes here so you guys can kind of see what I'm what I'm working off I need to go ahead and crunch this down what I'm working off of here so I'm using uh, David Suzuki who's a, I believe he's a Canadian wildlife biologist uh, as inspiration today um, he kind of has like the sweetest face ever <laughs> yeah like, oh he really does <laughs> Yeah, so um, I thought it'd be really fun. Um, and so I've just got uh, a few inspirations here um, from other artists, uh, just kind of using these as a guide and, uh, um, and kind of made some notes for what I want from him. And um, so, yeah, let's get going. Let's see. Do you usually write down notes like this for most of your characters that you create, or is it kind of just like internal reference? Um, yeah, I can. I mean, definitely for the streams, I right. I do a lot, a lot more like groundwork. I'm. It depends. Sometimes I just kind of go with it. Like I won't even do silhouette shape or any of that. I'll just mm. kind of hit the ground running and just start doing stream of conscious and just see what I can come up with. Um, but it's. I mean, you know, if you're doing any kind of major project, you have any briefs. Um, it's always good to do this. I, I'm just like slowly watching my mic. Oh no. <laughs> we need to get you some that. duct tape to hold it up. Yeah. I don't know if it's got oh a bolt gosh. loose. Yes. Oh yes. It's, and it's, of course, it's like a Phillips. Maybe oh, yeah. if I do, hold on. Maybe if I do that. Yeah, just put it all the way up. So then by the end of the stream, it will be back to yeah, where it's supposed to be. That's, yeah, perfect. Can you still hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I have already kind of done a few exploration sketches um, here just to kind of get things moving. Oh, very cool. Yeah, like the whole idea is kind of having this um, kind of positive curious you know whimsical man who's maybe getting up there in his years but is still very uh, physically capable mm -hmm. um so you know i also love the idea of him possibly you know having like uh, a thumb <laughs> piano or something <laughs> to like him you know something that like he plays to the animals you know or like uh, some kind of instrument or something, but mm -hmm. we'll go over that today as well. Um, just kind of extra stuff that we can add to his story. I love how every single one of these iterations looks completely different and they all have their own personality. 
um like the one uh, the one guy with the really big nose i really love his glasses his his two layer glasses actually yeah those are really great yeah <laughs> his little yeah, stubble right. on his chin yeah 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 he just <laughs> definitely needs to focus i know and then i was like oh, i was like no nah, i really want him to have this mustache it's like you go in there and get oh yeah big, you know, <laughs> giant mustache um but yeah so we'll i'll go ahead and shrink these a little bit <laughs> um rick in chat said he needs to have a kazoo <laughs> okay there that is there you the, go. that's There's the, the charming <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's uh i was just on vacation it's funny because um i have a, a four a four and a half year old and a 18 month old and they had found some kazoos oh <laughs> that was, that's so perfect yeah it was um beautiful is one word to describe it. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I had kind of started with this guy over here that I really liked using the Suzuki. And so I was probably really kind of need to explore a little bit more with what his um, proportions are going to be. Mm. I really wanted his head, maybe not a third, but pretty big as far as I kind of like these little legs when creating proportions for your characters do you typically kind of make one section bigger and one section smaller to kind of like balance it out a little bit or how is your thought process going when you're sketching like this yeah I mean yeah it's definitely like on the fly, but you kind of, you, as you're drawing it, you're like, okay, it, you can kind of tell when things don't feel right. And so, especially if you're doing a really big head, I feel like it kind of, it can't feel so big that it's going to topple over. Mm -hmm. So you either, you either want those really wide, wide shoulders, or, you know, if you have, like, if you're doing a really big one, maybe he's got like a little belly. <laughs> but then his stance is gonna be really wide so that he's holding this big giant thing. Right, so he can like, it can feel grounded and balanced that way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but yeah, we're gonna basically be using this guy um, to kind of decide. And, and I really liked this sketch as well. So I kind yeah, of wanted really to explain cool explore how I could fit him into this. Um, so let's see. Bruce in chat says great line sketches, by the way. Um, Annika yeah. says loved all the resources that you provided last time, Chris. Oh yeah, definitely. And yeah, if I, if I don't have as much today, um, I'll definitely see if there's more stuff I can include um, tomorrow morning. Oh yeah, for sure. So it's always a nice thing about having um, the two days. So you can kind of pick up the slack. So let's see. So I love this kind of bending over, kind of picking stuff up. I always thought it was like maybe a nest or something that he's discovering. Instead of that big giant helmet, pretty much just gonna replace that with a giant head. <laughs> Let's see. When you're creating your characters, do you have like a personality in mind for what you want the character to be or does the personality develop as the character develops? I think for this this one, definitely already have um, the personality worked out, um, but, and is really based off of the David Suzuki. Just you know, I don't know that much about him, but just the way he looks, you know, he's always smiling. He's got the squinty eyes, like he just the big, you know, got big gray hair and wily, and 
something like, you know, it kind of looks wise and whimsical. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm basically basing this character off of is just keeping it very much like a very lighthearted, um, biologist who's kind of maybe at the end of his career or already retired. And now he's, you know, this is maybe what he just does for fun. I don't know. Right. His passion. Yeah. His passion. Uh, David asks why rough sketch in blue. Um, I noticed some other illustrators, a color in that color as well, or sketch in that color. Um, that comes from traditional animation. Um, let's see if we got a big pack. A lot of, when they used to do, um, used to like, they have like non photo blue color pencils that you use to sketch. And then when you go over it with pencil or ink, when you Xerox it, it doesn't pick up the blue. Oh. So it's a non-photo blue. So that's what they would use. I got introduced to that because when I went to uh, the Academy of Art, they were st we were still doing animation on VHS tapes. <laughs> this is in 2005, <laughs> wow. which is crazy. Wow. But in 2005, that it hadn't, Digital hadn't like it was everybody's doing digital, but it just hadn't really moved into the education system yet as much as it probably should have. And so a lot of the teachers and people there were like still very old school. Um, and so that was something they introduced to us. And I just I like I like the way it looks. And then when I reduce the opacity, it really it almost disappears, but I Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's something that I think it's just a habit that I kind of just liked keeping, maybe because I do so much um, digital work now. It's something that makes me feel like I'm still doing traditional. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep the traditions alive. Yeah, I just, it's I definitely, I definitely miss it. I miss, I miss doing more stuff traditionally, but it just doesn't make a lot of sense these days um especially with um just client work and how many changes you need to make and yeah that's be a nightmare uh sam and chat is asking chris what's your favorite part of the overall character design process probably designing the face mm. like i just love drawing faces um it shows your faces have a lot of expression and a lot of character so yeah, I thank you. Um, it's yeah, I don't know. That's something that I've always loved drawing. Um, I'm, I mean, you know, faces are fun. That's once you kind of figure out the structure and everything. It's you know all of your, especially with the animation and character design. It's like everything's, you know, ninety percent of it is in the face. Mm -hmm. But then obviously you can almost take those characteristics and that sh all the shapes that you create there and you could just apply that to the entire character. But yeah, I mean, that's where, it's, it's where all the emotions coming from and, the, and speech and the language and this, the acting. And obviously you can do it with the body and the shapes and the hand movements and stuff, but it really, you know, a lot of it is in the face. I think that's why I really love it. Yeah, absolutely. I also love um, how you have different facial hair for pretty much every single one. And and honestly, the facial hair has a personality of its own. It really changes the face shape and it changes um, just the silhouette of the character in general. And you can also add emotion to facial hair too. Like you can make a mustache oh, yeah. like lift up or down. I see that oh, in yeah. animation a lot. Oh yeah, I mean, it kind of becomes, it almost becomes a set of lips. Yeah. Yeah, the way it flaps and, oh yeah. So yeah, kind of just getting him going here. See if that piece still works that way. So yeah, maybe we can just, now that I'm kind of warming up with this, we can start exploring his head. It's probably good since we were talking about it. And maybe, let's see. Chat, I would like to challenge you to come up with some awesome props that you think would go well with this character too. Give us some 
you have some brainstorming ideas. Oh, oh yeah. Are you talking about the chat or me? Chat and you. <laughs> oh, okay. I, for some reason I thought you said Chad. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Chad. Like, yeah, Chad. It's your that's, job, buddy. That's funny because a lot of streamers call accidentally call chat Chad sometimes. So it became a meme after a while. So that's funny. <laughs> um let's see. So yeah, let's actually go ahead. This was one of the head designs that I really liked. Um, let's see, did I just make, okay, good. I also like to try to um, label my layers as much as I can. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I think literally every single Adobe live guest comes on here and says those same exact words every single time. <laughs> so, I try I to it, label I, them, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, I think especially, especially on the, also, and tell me, tell me if I'm not zooming in, I've got, I just got a massive new Cintiq that like I'm still getting used to. So I can see it great on my end, but if you guys are having trouble seeing it or if it's not big enough, just let me know. Yeah, let us know, chat. Uh, I'm also looking at a very big full screen, so it's quite big for me, but let us know if you need to need to be zoomed in a little bit more. So yeah, let's go ahead. I'm just gonna, um, I'm actually gonna just kind of like put in a little bit of a face structure mm -hmm. so that we can duplicate it um, and just kind of get some, I'm just gonna kind of go over it, but we can do some alternate um, noses, beards, and maybe come up with a better design or maybe not. So that's something else that can really change a face shape is the nose. You can draw yes. the same character over and over, but give them a different nose and they're a completely different character. Exactly. So that'll be our, that'll be our base shape. Go ahead and move that over. Okay. So let's see here. Let's change up the ears. We can make it, he's got lobes on this previous one, but maybe, especially since we're doing aliens too, maybe he's got something that's not as normal. A little tip or something. Cause I wasn't sure. I was like, I don't know if I want to make this an alien wildlife biologist mm -hmm. or like a wildlife biologist that kind of goes and studies aliens. So that could be something we could make him uh, maybe a little more alien down the road. But for now, I'm trying to keep him as human as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, Anakin mm -hmm. in chat says that this biologist needs a little companion like an animal companion, Annika, or like a human companion? Animal? Animal? Animal. Yeah, I, I totally agree. That was something that um, was definitely thinking about yesterday. Uh, Bruce says, Chris, can I ask when drawing started for you, was... Um, was it in the family or did you just start drawing on your own? Um, yeah, I mean, my, my, um, my grandfather was an illustrator, but mm. not, that wasn't his profession. Um, but he did a lot of illustrations during World War II. Oh, wow. And he was, a uh, also an, an inventor. So he, he did a lot of like, uh, different kind of technical drawings and stuff. And, and my, my uncle's a pretty good illustrator. Um, neither of my parents, I mean, my mom does some art, but yeah, it was kind of something, I think it's not unexpected, but a little different, I think than what, you know, I don't think my parents were expecting that. So yeah, it was just something I just started doing when I was, um, really little, um, so yeah, 
just been doing it ever since. It was something that I don't think I, I don't think I ever thought I was going to do anything else. I was like, I'm good at this. I'm probably okay at everything else. So I'm <laughs> like, let's just like commit to this because I don't know how much of a future I have with like other occupations. <laughs> <laughs> what did you like drawing when you were like really young? Um. Yeah, oh my gosh. When I was really little, they used to have these stickers. I think I would get them from the grocery store. Um, and it was like dogs and like <laughs> underwater scenes or whatever. And I would just sit there and copy the stickers. Oh yeah. And like put them into scenes. Like I remember my earliest drawing I remember is like drawing like a pug, like on the sea floor <laughs> with like these whales and dogs. Like it was just very random and strange. That's great. Um, but yeah, I, I like, and then, you know, I was obsessed with um, Disney films and mm -hmm. uh, animation. So same. Was always, yeah. yeah, always yeah. drawing that kind of stuff, too. Yeah, when I was first getting into drawing, I did the same thing. I copied, but I took Pokemon cards and I copied the Pokemon illustration from it with pencil. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are so fun, too. Uh, All right, let's see. So we got a little bit, a little bit different nose. Got some different facial hair, and we can mm -hmm. like give him some. Maybe he's got like um, a crown. I like this handlebar mustache he's got going on here. Yeah, looks good. There we go. So there we go. Let's see what else. Maybe this time we can go with a small, like a really small nose maybe. Mm. And like a really big, maybe like a giant beard and a tiny nose. <laughs> the tiny nose just is so small, it just gets lost in the beard. <laughs> yeah, it's just like poking out. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see here. Which one do you like more, everyone in chat? The one on the left or the one in the middle so far? I think, me personally, I think I like the one in the middle so far. But it's, oh, it's so hard to decide because there's good, there's really neat attributes from each one. Man, I would be so indecisive if I was a character designer. <laughs> yeah, right? Because there's so many, there's so many options. That's the thing too, is there's never really like a right answer either. Yeah, exactly. I just, uh, yeah, I just picked up the um the art of Luca. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's just so cool kind of seeing some of the different iterations from the film and just how many different designs there were. And it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. I, lo I loved that film. It was amazing. I actually haven't seen it yet. Have you guys oh seen my it in gosh. chat? I've heard it's really good. It's, it's insane. It's so good. <laughs> Bruce in chat says, I'm liking this big beard coming in. Um, yeah. Sam says, I like the shapes of the, uh, the middle one. The nose is great too. Steve says, I like the middle one. Katie says, I like the middle one. David says, I like the hair on the left. So yeah, there's always, there's like one attribute that you kind of like stick with. Like, oh, I really like that one. That one's drawing me in. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Oh, I like these, uh, these caterpillar eyebrows. He's got, yes. he's got this going on. Yeah, it's great. Let's see. Get a little there. Sam says, I haven't seen Luca, but everyone keeps mentioning it. I'm always behind on movies. Me too, man. Me too. Yeah, I, I have the, that is the one luxury of having kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get to actually like take time to watch all the animation. It's like, oh no, I gotta, I gotta do some research, babe. 
<laughs> kids we gotta yes. watch this yeah it's for science for science yeah okay maybe it's got a crazy button oh yeah that's great <laughs> yeah. change it up here. okay um trying to figure out where this layer is Let's see there we go. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's move that down. When you were first getting into character design, did you used to have to look at a lot of reference for like hairstyles and different types of noses and beards and things like that? Um, I feel you like you just, yeah. And I still, I mean, I still do. I've got, I, I tend to create um, Pinterest boards. Oh yeah. Um, to start a project. And that seems to work, work pretty well. Just kind of um, getting things laid out, um, generating ideas. I, I, I also have, I have a bunch of artists that I follow that I'll kind of go and see what people are doing. And, mm -hmm. but yeah. And then other times it's like, you don't want to look at anything and you just want to try to pull whatever you can from your head not use reference, not, you know, try not to be influenced by anything. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's the bummer about social media is that you can accidentally get influenced too much by specific artists. And then you're like, okay, I need to reel it back and like try oh, to yeah. stay a little bit more true to my own personal style. Oh, completely. I mean, I've, I, I oh, oh, I locked it. Um, yeah, I'm like in that in between. I, I I'm trying to think when I feel like social media really picked up after I was out of art school, um, and I didn't because I think a lot of people are like just posting all of your art, everything you do. And I think a lot of people do it before they're ready to do it, or they just they're trying to make all these finished things or. Mm -hmm get likes or get follow and it's just i feel like i was lo very lucky to kind of have a journey without any of that because there wasn't this weird outside pressure um whereas now it just feels like and i know even professional artists too there's the pressure to, to try to post on social media all the time um it's a lot oh yeah definitely lots of lots of stress and pressure i know I know multiple artists that say that they feel guilty for not constantly um, uploading on social media. And it's a bummer, oh especially gosh. for for artists because it takes so long to do just one post. You're doing an entire illustration just for one post. Yeah, and I've no, I mean, I've never been good at it. Just, <laughs> like every time I try and I'm like making all these promises, I'm like, I'm just lying to these people. I'm not gonna do, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do this. Like I got too much other stuff going on and it's just, yeah, there's no way. Let's see. All right, we're yeah, gonna get hard. crazy. Let's try. Whoa, big nose, carrot nose. Yeah, let's, just, yeah, let's just try <laughs> it. Let's see what happens. Sweet. Um, let's see, Stu in chat is asking what brush are you using for your sketching? Um, let's see, I think it's one of Kyle's. Let's see, the Webster brush, let's see. Um, yeah, I think it's Kyle's drawing pencil or something. I got I got it from like the the pack. I'm trying to remember exactly what it is. Sorry. If I um I'll look it up in between and I'll 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 post it. Um, is the blue the default on that brush? I don't I don't think so, but maybe <laughs> cuz I think be. I don't I think Kyle has a telephoto pencil brush that actually has the blue as the default, which could possibly be it, but um, if you're looking for Kyle's sketching brushes, I would definitely suggest downloading the Mega Pack because I think the majority of them are in there. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what it's from. Is yeah. the the Mega Pack? Um, 
Yeah, I honestly, for the longest time, um, I would just use a hard round. Wow, really? Almost that's, everything. Yeah. That's impressive. I, <laughs> I just, um, especially coming from mostly traditional background, it just, I didn't want anything to really look digital. Mm-hmm. And so I it almost, almost like when I first started, everything was almost like, um, doing like silk screen layers. So mm-hmm. it like worked very flat, almost anim- like animation style, like cell shading. Um, and then when I started doing more, it's like I would I would use the um, the flat round to create texture, but it'd just be like, you know, like right. really. <laughs> and then it was like, got better. I was just, or just more uh, comfortable. I was just like, what am I doing? <laughs> painful like i just because once you get away from that really flat style it just you need like having texture brushes is just so amazing and it's not like a texture brush isn't going to save you but if you're if you already know what you're doing it's going to save you a lot of time oh yeah it helps a lot it helps a lot oh my gosh so much especially if you're you're trying to make your artwork look a little bit more traditional and you don't really want that digital look. A lot of the texture brushes nowadays, you know, you got your watercolor paints, especially like on Fresco, the live brushes. I don't know if you've ever used Fresco before. Um, I've been, my, my friend loves it. I haven't been able to get into it yet. I just haven't had the time. Yeah, for I, sure. I really heard that it's, it's got a lot of great brushes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, crayons and oil brushes and all kinds of traditional media in digital now, which is really convenient. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, digital now is just so you can do anything. It's pretty incredible. I mean, that is the, it's like a blessing and a curse. Mm -hmm. Like I would always tell everybody, I was like, don't start digital. Just don't. (laughs) I mean, it's, but at the same time, if I wasn't doing, di- like, I wouldn't understand color or explore as much if I didn't have a digital palette to work on. Sure. Because it's it takes so long to to prep and clean and, uh, you know, you could spend an hour mixing a color and then it just turns to muted, muddy. You're just like, ah, I can't get that back. So, yeah, it's, it's like, or maybe it's more like, don't, like, make sure you're doing both. You know, Mm -hmm. you need to understand like digital all comes from traditional rules and laws. So it's like understanding those things is just going to make your digital work 10 times better. So go take a figure drawing class, you know, go, go study some trees, uh, like all, you know, just get out there and, and, and draw something outside or it's just makes life a lot better. Speaking of which, David in chat is asking, Chris, did you study anatomy uh, to understand the shape of your characters? Um, yeah, I mean, I've I've studied anatomy for a long time. I mean, I mean, I, I it's so funny because I'm, I'm like, I need to brush up on my anatomy. It's been a while because um, I used to even take um, Ecarche classes, which is. Um, essentially you build like a quarter scale skeletal system and muscular system with uh, clay. Mm. And so I've, you know, done those classes, I've done a lot of anatomy classes, but it'll slip away if you're not <laughs> studying it all the time. There's so many different little curves and, and bones and S curves and trying to just understand how everything works together. But yeah, this helps a lot. Obviously, with um, with animation, you're gonna you use it, but at the same time, there's a lot of ways to kind of cheat. You know, just because, yeah, well, that you know that arm's got however many muscles, and this turn and that turn, or you could use two cylinders that are tapered, attach it to a ball, and, right? You know, like you can simplify things a lot. So if I would say if you're doing this kind of stuff, um, yes, you need to have a good fundamental understanding of anatomy, but there are a lot of great artists out there right now that are that have great books and tutorials and things on how to like break down anatomy and make it extremely simple. Um, 
and I, I would say if you're if this is kind of the stuff that you want to do, uh, look at that stuff because you're gonna you're gonna get lost um, in those big big anatomy books, even the ones for artists. I mean, it's a lot. It can be a lot to handle. So oh yeah, really overwhelming and intimidating to just open a textbook and oh my gosh, uh, so much, so, <laughs> so so much. Yeah, I totally agree. And this one. It's kind of like a little droopy, droopy ear. Maybe this whole face will be droopy. Let's see. You know what? Let's not do that. If we're going droopy, let's let's make it all droopy. Uh, Anna, Annika's asking, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, uh, I, I'll, I'll hold on to it. Go ahead, Annika. Okay. Um, Annika is asking, oh, what does Chris use for uh, your animating, uh, for animating your characters? Um, like any tools? I, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't do animation. Oh. I've, I've studied animation, um, but it's not something that I, I, I just do the concept art character design. Um, so yeah, that is, that is, I've done animation here and there, but it's not something that I can, I, I wouldn't be the one to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried animation a handful of times and I honestly do not have the patience for it. I, I am a huge appreciator of animation, especially yeah. traditional animation, but man, I cannot frame by frame. I just don't have the patience for it. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, even doing like basic uh, visual, I've done some visuals and stuff for um, uh, live shows for electronic music. And mm -hmm. it's even doing small things like that is so intensive. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't know how, because you look at a movie and you're like, oh yeah, I, I animated the, those like five seconds. It took me about six months. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God. <laughs> so tedious. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I just, I'm not, I'm like you, I just, I, I'm an illustrator. I really, that's kind of where I get my joy. And there's way too many good animators for me to take time away from them. Like you guys, you, you take care of it. I'll provide some skeleton work and some ideas. You, you guys are the, the magic makers. Yeah, for sure. Um, on that note, I know that, you know, Toon Boom for 2D is, I know, a big, a big um, software that they use. I think Harmony. Let's see what else. 3D, I know Maya. Mm -hmm. It's a big one. 3D Studio Max. Um, <clears throat> Blender's a great, I mean, Blender's free. It's open source. More and more studios are using it. Um, I have a buddy who basically one year just taught himself and now he does all of his work he makes short films and wow. he's amazing at it yeah i mean it's that's so you know internet's pretty amazing where you, you get so many resources um especially in something like blender if you don't have the money um i think that's a great great tool to look into sam and Stu and chat are saying the fourth one is their favorite now Let's see. Is there now that there's five at one, two, three, this guy? Yeah, this carrot guy? carrot nose. Yeah. Carrot nose. <laughs> yeah, he's got a little bit of an edge to him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pointy Damn nose. Animals. Pointy hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love these aliens. <laughs> Poop everywhere. Let's see. Okay, so this is my droopy dude. Droop. He'd probably have a little more arch in his back too. Yeah, even his even his posture is drooping. Everything about him is drooping. Yeah, he looks a little old. Yeah, <laughs> he's probably not going to make it very very far <laughs> in the jungles. Yeah, he's been doing this a while. Yeah, let's see. I know what kind of hair he would have. Maybe just a little bit in the, in the front there. kind of balance the let's see we can do like a little curve 
because the face is your favorite part, do you always do the face first like this? Yeah, like, I mean, it's good for me because it helps me warm up. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did, you know, I cheated a little bit and to kind of did some exploration ahead of time. So I kind of had an idea of who this guy was. Um, but yeah, usually for me, it's like the face. That's, that is where I, I kind of figure out what the character is going to be from there. It does. I don't always do it that way. I mean, I think this was like the first initial sketch. It was just some, you know, almost like a beekeeper, mm -hmm. kind of larger man. And then I think once I saw David Suzuki's images and like him working, I was like, oh, it'd be way cooler if he was like, not this like big guy, but like this tiny little guy. Yeah. The, you know, a really small stature. And then I think the, my ideas for him were to make him a very kind of slight stocky individual. And then like his, you know, so like when you see him, he's just kind of like this little fly on the wall. Um, but then he's got, he's going to have all this gear that we'll get into. He will either get that into that today, or um, that'll be a big part of tomorrow's stream of kind of all the tools he uses. So I love this idea of him kind of carrying around this giant laboratory um, <laughs> on his back, which you guys can kind of see. It's kind of this initial idea. Um, but then when he takes it off, he's just like this little guy. So <laughs> maybe we can try, try to do some of those. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. All right. So yeah, I think we should choose one of these to kind of go from. I don't know if the chat wants to decide what I want to explore more. Um, oh yeah, guys, if you want to totally welcome. Yeah, vote in chat. Which one is your favorite out of all five of these? Would love to hear your opinions. I, I would am say liking my favorite. Four. Yeah, I, I I think I like four as well. I think he he's okay. got he's got a little bit of an edge, but he's also still just like a the little old guy. <laughs> yeah. So four? Is everybody liking four? Takes a second because we got a little oh, bit of okay. a delay, but they're coming gotcha. in. One person said four, one person said five. So we got a mix between uh super pointy guy and also a droopy guy droopy guy oh we got lots of fours coming in i think four is the winner okay cool i was gonna choose four i was just i was giving you the illusion of choice of course <laughs> <laughs> just kidding that's awesome okay good four is four is my favorite as well okay so let's go ahead And use a lasso tool and I'm just going to cut them out with command X and then command V and pull them in here. And make him bigger. Okay. And then I do love this. I think this is going to be my pose that I'm most likely going to use. Um, I'm going to do some other ones, but this one I feel like has, I'm able to kind of show, show off the face. I'll have all the gear. I kind of had a space for um, either it could be like a little drone, a little pet. Mm -hmm something there'll be an uh, additional element i think i like as well and see now i've just got this cluster of layers that i don't know don't <laughs> so we all gonna, yeah <laughs> so i'm gonna mark this as hero sketch because a lot of the times they call it the hero pose just kind of like your main pose on a character sheet um kind of represents a character um personality and kind of d does a good job showing off um, their shapes and, and uh, design. Let's see. 
That we can probably get rid of. Let's see what I'm getting. Let's see. Combine those. Okay. That's fine. Also, I just wanted to remind everyone over on the YouTube channel, if you are over there, we are actually not looking at the chat. So if you would like us to answer any of your questions or just uh, be able to chat with you, head over to Behance at behance.net slash, uh, slash Adobe Live, uh, and we will be able to answer your questions. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. Oops. I'm going to make him a little bit bigger. And then we are going to kind of start exploring. Um, so we've got, we've pretty much got our pose relatively worked out drawing, but we're going to go ahead and put this new head on him um, and actually like explore the design of the clothing. Is he, is he on a planet that he can breathe the air? You know, right. does he need to be, have some kind of like exosuit? A um, little bit of world building in there too. Yeah, that's so that's kind of what we'll be doing next. Um, let's see. Okay. So, are you a writer? Do you like to world build and write stories or anything like that too on top of doing artwork? Um, I'm really great at writing paragraphs hmm. and then that's it. Short <laughs> no. stories. <laughs> yeah, um yeah, I I'm not like I'm great at coming up with ideas and stories, getting it on paper and making it really nice. Um, not as good. I'm, I'm currently working on a comic book uh, that I've been working on um, with my friend Corey Mitchell. Uh, and he's a he's a great writer. Mm -hmm. And I've been working That's on awesome. that for the last. Yeah, it's been super fun. Where is this head sketch? OK. Um, We've been working on um, this comic for the last two, two and a half years. Um, it's called Miles from Nowhere. And I've definitely learned, definitely learned a lot um, in that process of kind mm -hmm. of, oops, what's going on here? Um, and it's actually been really fun um, coming up with uh, dialogue because the way the way he had written it was for uh, the whole script was for television. Mm. And so when I got it, you know, his buddy was like, you should you should make this for you. Right, since it, the project uh, got dropped, he's like, well, you should make this into a graphic novel. Mm. And so that's when um, he approached me. And I had never done one before. And he's like, you want to do this? And, you know, almost 200 pages later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two and a half years into my first ever comic book. I'm just like, oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. I so, can't imagine um, how much work goes into a graphic novel. Holy cow. It's it's been a lot, but it's also been uh, a pretty incredible experience. And it's taught me a lot um, because it's it's a TV script. It's a screenplay. Um, I think most comics, they it's um, they do it as it's written for comics, so it's written like panel by panel, like breakdowns mm -hmm. and page breakdowns. And this, I had to do that myself, so that was kind of an interesting um, exercise because it it wouldn't just be, you know, what's happening in this panel. It's like I would have to go and. Th thumbnail out these script pages it basically story I was basically storyboarding yeah so that's been really cool I think it's I feel like it's taught me a whole bunch about story beats and tempo um, you know how to visualize a script um, and a lot of that is the world building because a lot of those things where it's like 
okay, here's a fight or there's a blue alien. Uh, you know, <laughs> so you're like, what does that look like? Where yeah. does it come from? So there's all these kind of things that you have to, uh, you have to kind of start answering. Um, and so that's been really fun exploring a lot of that. Um, so yeah, it's been a great project. And I guess that was like a long winded answer to, <laughs> can I write? <laughs> no, <laughs> Not that's great. really, but I've learned how to, I've learned a lot more about story structure and, uh, dialogue and so yeah, yeah for sure it's been, it's been a ton of fun um jamiro in chat i'm so sorry if i'm mispronouncing your name um asks what size is your canvas and what dpi um i almost always work at 300 dpi if not 600 um but 600 that's it can be pretty overkill like you don't three three hundred is standard. Like if you're gonna print, um, if you want to do anything with it, don't work less than three hundred. Mm -hmm. um, stuff for web, you can always reduce it down to like seventy two DPI or whatever. But I would always start at three hundred DPI. As far as canvas size, um, I'm so terrible. Like I, it's always different for me. I'm just like uh, eleven point three seven by fifteen point. I I don't really care because I just kind of get it to. Like I want it to be over 3000 pixels at least, mm -hmm. you know, and then I can kind of, you know, Photoshop's so great. You can, you can crop it and cut it down to whatever you want afterwards. I just would hate for, to do all this work. And then when I go to print or if someone's going to use for something and all of a sudden it's getting pixelated because I didn't start out high enough, you know, with a high, high enough resolution. So I would always go overkill. And then if your computer's running slow or what, you know, you can always kind of take, you can take pieces of that and work on a smaller canvas, but then that image itself is bigger and you can always bring it back in. Mm -hmm. um, it's a workaround, but yeah. So right now I think it's, I think it's around 11 by 17 um, at 300 DPI um, is what I'm working with right now. Yeah. I, I pretty much always work in 300 DPI as well. Yeah, I feel like that's the standard, right? That's like the mm -hmm. general. Like, and if you load it up into anything for print, it's usually everything is like a minimum of 300 DPI. Yeah. Even if I don't plan on printing it, there's always that chance and you don't want to risk doing an illustration where it can't be printed. Because I learned that lesson early on when I was a teenager where somebody wanted one of my illustrations and I didn't know any better. And I was like, oh, it looks so bad printed out. <laughs> Regrets. Yeah, like, oh, Learn that no. lesson. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. It's I've I've had a few. Uh, I mean, the worst is when you like I've had a few of the uh, posters I've worked on for shows and lost the original. Oh. And all I've got is like a thousand pixel. <laughs> oh no! Like, Looks great on a postcard. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, back up your files. Mm -hmm. into the cloud um, there it is so um, for a lot of like poses and stuff there's sometimes I'll just kind of um, come up with it on my own um, other times if I'm looking for a specific pose um, I'll go and find photo reference um, for this one in particular um, it's just based off of like, kind of like an old, old traditional portraits, um, that a lot of like explorers and, and wildlife biologists used to take. It's kind of the pose, the hip on the, or hand on the hip kind mm -hmm. of posing. Um, so that's where this is coming from. It's nothing too crazy, but I kind of wanted, I wanted the pose itself to be very like simple and stoic and then so tomorrow um and we get into more of the not not necessarily the personality because we're gonna we're exploring that right now but when we get more into the like acting moments and um kind of like what he does in the wild um we'll see a lot more of that personality come out and there'll be a lot more like action shots and acting moments and expressions but for now, I really wanted this, 
this pose is good for me to kind of nail down um, the design elements. So then when I do that, when I do all that stuff tomorrow, I've, I've got everything kind of laid out. Kind of like a like a character sheet almost, like a reference sheet for the character. Yeah, because that's basically, you know, I'm basically, I'm probably going to be doing as much as I can besides the turnaround, mm -hmm. just because that can take a long time. And that's for like another stream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not fun. I mean, oh I, I, I can do them, but it's just, uh, that is very much um, a tech, the technical side. Where it's like, if you don't have to do it, you probably don't want to. <laughs> but, it's like you, you need to for production, but it's definitely uh, it's a lot of work. Did it take you a long time to build up the skill to be able to draw the same character over and over again and make them look the same every time? Because I've heard that that's very I know you're not doing animation, but uh, like for a turnaround, for instance, you're going to be drawing the same character more than once or for a well, graphic, no graphic novel. I was going to say it's actually um, I'd say for this is so much easier. Um, one because kind of the characters i'm most of the characters i'm designing are very much like 2d animated or big you know 3d kind of like family oriented animation so it's like big shapes simple mm -hmm. simpler shapes um yeah the comic book i'm working on is the exact opposite of all of this <laughs> like it's a much more gritty um adult graphic novel um it's got it's much more realistic the drawing style and so that actually has been a huge a huge challenge of really trying to figure out the consistency and continuity um with a lot of the characters um this really i mean it's hard yeah you have to there's you know like your main character you're gonna see him and probably like at least 100 different panels 150 different panels those are all different acting moments those are all different expressions or you have to do the same expression but differently yeah <laughs> like you're trying not to you're trying not to copy what you just did um so yeah i i, I realized that those are actually really that's been the toughest this is hard, but it's definitely not as difficult, um, I think, as the as the comic book stuff is. Were there I, any I, tricks that you kind of like learned to be able to draw your characters over and over? Or was it just like repetition? Um, yeah, just I mean, honestly, I I feel like now at this stage of the book where I'm on, gosh, I'm on page 175 and i feel like i'm just now like feeling really comfortable with the characters it's just so it's so much work and i think the really focusing on the continuity and it's like from scene to scene you're like ah oh, what how many tears does he have in his jeans and mm -hmm. like okay there's like some like blood splatter like does that have to stay on him? Does he like wipe it off? Like, it, cause you're, you know, you're like building these movie sets. Um, it was actually really cool too. Cause I got to, I used, um, SketchUp, um, for a lot of my sets. Cause I started to realize I was like, I can't, I can't sit and do all of these. Like I really was struggling on, um, figuring out on how am I, I'm gonna do some of these scenes with so many different angles. It was just so much perspective work, um, which is, is so time consuming. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was watching uh, another really talented um, artist, this guy, this guy, Greg Hinkle, who uh, I went to school with and he did, um, God, I hope I say his name right. Let me look it up. He's just done Airboy and, and some other really cool comics published by Image. Um, but I was looking at how he was doing this, these bar scenes because um, he was uh, doing scenes from like actual San Francisco bars and stuff. And he had built these 
uh, built these scenes in, in SketchUp or in some other 3D modeling. And I was like, that's genius. So I kind of developed this technique of going in and doing that for scenes and just kind of doing it with like block shapes. And then I put like guidelines. And so then I can, all of a sudden I've got all these great, um, I've got all these great scenes that I can just kind of rotate the camera around. And I'm like, okay, I have a starting point. And then I know enough that I can place characters and that I know how to, you know, twist the forms and stuff, but like just kind of having these almost like Lego building blocks to, to kind of build off of was really cool. Yeah, that's a really neat tool to to help kind of speed up the perspective process and at any camera angle too. That's really yeah, because it's just it's so much. And yeah. I mean, obviously there are uh, illustrators out there and comic guys that they can do that no problem. I oh, mean, yeah. they're just incredible. But I am not that guy. <laughs> and I, I'm like, this comic needs to get done by the i've like <laughs> i'm already i'm like oh my god two years no one told me um so i'm trying to like really i'm, I'm like taking every shortcut i can to like get this thing the story told so without it without it looking like i am um but that is like almost all of production right it's like how can you do this faster yeah but keep the same quality so it's been been a good good learning experience. Let's see. Okay, so I'm kind of just laying out the feet here. Kind of, I'm definitely just going over the sketch I already had because I'm actively thinking of what I'm going to add as far as tools and gear. Um, some kind of buying some time here while I kind of go over that in my head. Have you um, already previously like looked up reference for the kind of clothing that you would like to give him? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, um, I've definitely got some reference um, from my Pinterest stuff and then some other, some other artwork that um, I thought was really cool. Um, so I've got, I've got a few things that I'm looking at um, that are kind of inspiring the design. Um, I do love this idea of him almost, not like a shawl, but I think having some kind of... Drapery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? right? Something, something like that. Something, yeah. Cloak. Okay. Cloak, you know, it's like, yeah, it gets cold out there. Yeah. In those alien planets. So, you know, maybe something, something like that. Maybe some, or some patterns on it. Um, let's see. Like his boots. Some inseams or something. Cool face. I was thinking about he could have even some like possible headgear. Mm. So we need a few elements that are kind of going to show us that he's not working on Earth. He's definitely on off planet somewhere else doing something studying some other kind of creatures. Uh, in chat uh, a while back, Annika uh, said, did we ever decide what kind of companion the biologist should have? And Steve suggested either a bird or a lizard, maybe. Ooh, lizard could be really cool. Maybe, I do like the lizard idea. I've done a lot of birds. I think a lizard mm. would be really cool. So yeah, so let's say, okay, this is a good good way to discuss this. So let's go with like a lizard, right? So first things first is I'm going to kind of think of what kind of lizard 
I want to reference. Um, it's usually kind of where I go to first. Um, like a jumping off point, basically. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I just went to, it's, this is great too, because I just went to um, the Cal Academy of Sciences in San Francisco uh, on Saturday. And I don't know if any if anybody out there has been there, but they have a, a encapsulated rainforest section. Oh, with wow. like, and there's like hundreds of butterflies flying all over and tons of reptile. I mean, they even have spiders that are free roaming. Like, wow. Like massive spiders. <laughs> really, cool. I mean, it's, it's really cool. I know my wife's like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> And, I'm, and it's funny because my son was like, no, dad, they're not in the cages. And I was like, I'm pretty sure the spiders are going to be behind something. And we get there. I'm like, no, you're right. They're right. They're just right there. <laughs> I'm assuming they just like keep feeding their web. So they like don't go anywhere. Right. But, and I'm always like, how are these butterflies surviving? <laughs> <laughs> they're really trusting everybody with these things. Um, so cool. I in in my head, my, my fate, one of my favorite lizards, um, is the uh the gecko oh yeah um there's obviously like a few different types there's the leopard gecko it's like the classic um and i saw another one there that i'm going to try to see if i can look up so i'll usually just go on google and i'll start there um if i'm lucky i can get to a library or something and actually like look at a book but that seems very rare these days. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want to say it was called like a flat-tailed, flat-tailed gecko. Yes. Oh my God. These things are so cool. It was like sitting on the, the side of the, um, the, uh, oh my God, what are they called? Whatever they call where you put, um, I'll just call it a glass case. Like Adrian? But, yeah, like a like a vivarium, like atrium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but you guys can see these. They oh, cool. cool! And their their eyes are really wild. Whoa! I mean, let's see if I can zoom in. I mean, that's so. And I mean, they've got these really cool flat tails. They look like aliens in themselves. Yeah, exactly. And they can, it's to blend in with, right, with the foliage on the. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll use this guy as a, a reference here. I think that'll be fun. Okay. Let's zoom back out. Cool. So I will definitely get to that. And I think a good place um, for him to be, we'll just hit, we'll go ahead and. Maybe this is like some kind of big stick. He'll probably, you know, be perched right on here somewhere. Sure. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be a good perch. Some kind of wood or something. Also, you guys, don't forget to tomorrow we're going to be having an artist spotlight as well. Um, And then you will be able to uh, submit either yourself or someone that you know. Um, We'll have a tab above the chat for you to uh, fill out a form to be able to do that. And uh, you'll have to stick around uh, till the end of tomorrow to be able to see who the artist spotlight is. They have really, really cute artwork. I'm very excited to go over it. (laughs) I think, yeah, I think I just saw it um, before we went on. I was Mm -hmm. looking it up. Yeah, very cool. Okay. So I'd say body wise, um, I think we're pretty close. Hi, Ben. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Got structure down. Leave the belts down there. Okay. Let's see. Maybe scooch this out a little bit more. Okay.
a little more, a little more hip action. Maybe. Got to get more hip action always. Yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. very important. Stick those hips out. <laughs> A little sassy okay. stance. Yeah, he's sassy. <laughs> so sassy. Okay. All right. So no, I'm gonna let's see. I don't want to do this. I think we can keep him like this for now, and then let's go ahead and explore this lizard dude. Okay. Action. Grass or something. Because probably what I'll do is I'll have, excuse me. <coughs> um, I'll kind of have this version with the, the um, kind of cape. And then probably what I'll do is duplicate him maybe several times um or we'll probably just do some different versions so we can have a version where he's got his big pack on mm -hmm. he probably wouldn't have the this on his shoulders if he's going to have a big backpack so we'll probably right. take that off and bundle it somewhere um let's see let's pull up some other okay so let's get his lizard friend going here. Oh my God, they're so cute. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I had I had a lizard growing up. Oh and, yeah. Yeah, he was not this cute. This <laughs> is he was a, a monitor lizard mm. um, named Knuckles. Oh, cute. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I, we can only keep him so long because it got really hard <laughs> feeding him. Animals. Yeah, I was like, as I as I kind of grew up, I was like, uh, I don't want to keep doing this. Yeah, <laughs> like reptiles are pretty poor, hard to keep. Yeah, I was like, poor little mice. Yeah, <laughs> especially because when you're, um, it's like when they're little, it's like you're feeding them baby mice. It's kind of, it's like uh, this is kind of brutal. So let's see, maybe he's kind of sitting here. Next to his buddy. And then we'll really make these eyes kind of ginormous. That's adorable. Um, it's kind of funny too, because it looks like they have this giant smile already. Oh my gosh, Mona in chat says, LOL, I have 17 snakes and three leopard geckos. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 17? That's a lot. That's a, lot. lot. That's a lot of any That's animal. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. Let's see. While you're in the sketching process like this, are you already thinking about color too? Or is that a later process? No, I'm I'm like color has never been easy for me. Mm. That's is definitely something that I need to like set time. That's like a separate process for me. Um because I there's just so much like color just affects so much, right? Um mm -hmm. And so I really need to like sit and think um, 
about how I use the color. It's just not as natural to me as it is for some people. Some people are just so good with color. Um, and I, I can, I mean, I can get by and I can, but I, I it's definitely something that I, I like need to explore a lot. Yeah. I try different color schemes and stuff. And I don't, I don't really think in color. It's always just kind of form and shape and structure. Um, not that it's an afterthought necessarily, but it's just something that um, I don't think about right away. Yeah, that's funny. That's kind of the exact opposite for me. I usually have to set a lot of time aside for sketching because sketching has always been really difficult for me, but color comes naturally. Yeah. I definitely yeah, think in color. I know exactly what you mean by just like, just it's just the way your brain processes things, I guess. Everyone's different. Yeah, completely. Completely. And it's just, yeah, I've always, it, it honestly took me, uh, I probably was in, um, uh, community college. Well, I did some in high school, but I felt like I got away a lot with not doing as much color as I probably should have. Um, but it wasn't really until I got into, um, community college, um, I really started exploring a lot more color. Let's see. I'm trying to think. I love his big googly eyes. <laughs> a lot of character there. Yeah. And it'll probably, you know, this is just a nice rough nice rough sketch i'm sure i'll i'll hate it and change it <laughs> <laughs> i'm already like oh, his body's looking a little wonky but that's okay we're just trying to get him in there more of like a general position um kind of figuring out what he's doing might even be eating something <laughs> he's got a fly yeah let's make him chewing on it there we go it almost looks as though the the expression on the biologist is is frustrated because he was studying that fly and the the gecko ate it while he was studying it. <laughs> I mean, that's honestly backstory. Couldn't be, more, couldn't be more perfect, right? And things like that. Just that's that's kind of the beauty of just sketching and drawing and letting the story tell itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that is one thing I've noticed is that you can try too hard. For sure. Yeah. I mean, with, with anything, you can think too long, um, all the things. Like I've, I've had so many moments where I'll, I'm just over, I'll be overthinking almost every single aspect of a project. And it's, I mean, it is the one thing that's nice um, working around others. I think it's been hard. It's hard as a freelancer. Like you really, you have to make sure that you have friends that you can get good feedback from. Yeah. But a lot of the times you're just kind of sitting in your studio by yourself. There's only so much you can tell yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Other than just being disappointed constantly. <laughs> also, everyone, don't forget to save your work. If you haven't, oh, yeah. save your work, Thank PSA. You. Save we always like to say flip, sip, stretch, and save here. So flip your canvas, stretch your wrist. That is true. That is true. Let's sip see here. water. See we got. And save see your work. We got here. Let's see. <laughs> All right. It's looking pretty good, Flip. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, yeah. I don't really see anything. I got this lizard. We got to work on him. That's okay. Yeah, and for, and I, I hadn't really done this, and I would kind of do like a, End of sketch flip, but you can always make it as a, a quick hot key, mm -hmm. which is because otherwise you have to go through a whole menu system. Um, it's not 
doesn't make a lot of sense if you're trying to use it as a, a tool to really help balance the design. Yeah, there isn't a default hotkey for it, but I think you can like record an action. I'm pretty sure that's what I did. Um, I set it to one yeah. of my my hotkeys on my tablet. Yeah, mine. I just have it as a command F. Mm -hmm. Forgot forgot what that was being used for. I was like, I'm never going to use that. This will be this will be what it is. Sam in chat, our moderator says, yeah, it looks solid flipped. So you're doing good. Good, good. <laughs> good and he's eye. a concept artist, so he's oh, got yeah. the eye. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I was just watching some of his live streams. Oh yeah, um, Sam's awesome. Yeah, Ta you're talented dude. <laughs> um, okay, all right. So we got a little dude there. I think we've got most of the structure built here. I think we're looking pretty good. So I think what I'm going to do now is what time is it? It's almost 11. Okay. Yeah, we got about a half an hour left. Okay. Oops. Let me go ahead. And Try to figure out, okay, those are all my dudes. Okay, good, good. I'm just gonna get rid of all this other stuff for now. This is, my other, gosh. <laughs> That's me. See? I am a professional layer hunter. Uh, yep. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do everybody? I'm gonna group it. Oh. Oh, look at that. Okay. So now I've got him. It's great. Move that up to the top, oops. Um, okay. So then I can move out of the way up here. It's fine. It's going to be there. And now this one, I'm going to use this kind of building up some more of the things I've got going on here. Um, I'm going to take this away and maybe we can kind of explore a little bit. maybe some of the other stuff he's got going on. So I do really want him to have, oops, just got rid of the wrong reference there. I want him to have um, some good gear. Mm -hmm. Um, I made some notes as far as like uh, gear that they traditionally have just for uh, like a you know, wildlife biologist nowadays. Um, but they're going to have uh, usually binoculars or some, you know, some type of um, viewing piece that you can see far off into the distance. Um, recording equipment. That was a big one. I think I wanted to put that here. So is he visiting a, a far off planet? Like, did he travel to this planet? Yeah, I think okay. that's kind of how I'm like, in my head, I'm imagining all of these other small planets that you could totally go and survive on. And some you can, some you can't. The one that we're going to is totally like habitable and um, he doesn't need to wear a, a helmet of any type. So he's got some kind of like spacecraft as well. And yeah. um, he would also have maybe some camping gear too, possibly, or yes, um, like we got like travel, like compass or some kind of GPS or map or like. You're making uh, this really difficult now. <laughs> <laughs> How many things do I have to design? All yes. of the things. Yes. The more He's... things, the more lived in his pack will feel. <laughs> that's no, that's that's totally it. And he's going to have all this stuff. Um, what else is he going to have had some other, you know, he's got like a canteen of some type. He's got, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's got the recording equipment. He's going to have some kind of like GPS systems. Um, he's probably going to have like a small laboratory with him sure. to like do chemical tests with waters and different materials. You know, let's just put this as items. Um, 
but yeah the rocket ship oh man that'd be super fun to design let's see so this could maybe be some of his recording gear maybe we kind of build a belt in here Um, Annika in chat says a clock hanging from his pocket or a compass hanging would be nice or adding a monocle would also be nice too. <laughs> um, yes, I like all of those suggestions. <laughs> Let's see, maybe. This can be something. have this kind of big crazy compass oh that's awesome i love oversized things oversized things yes. and also really really tiny things add so much character agree completely agree so is that maybe he's got I can just imagine him holding this giant compass like this, like <laughs> looking around. Yeah. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> um, and then maybe it's got a few kind of tinctures. Type of belt buckle. Let's see. Oh, Rick just made a good point in chat. Uh, do alien planets have a magnetic north, or does this compass work differently than our compasses? Different. <laughs> Space magic. <laughs> yeah, I, that is a great, great question. One that I probably won't answer, <laughs> but you, <can. laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, it would be kind of, I mean, gosh, this guy would be fun to explore in so many different things. You know, like think about all the planets you can go to and right. Like what are the, what's the gravity on all those planets? Yeah. Well, maybe it's just a, like, how do you move through like a gaseous planet? And, let's see, kind of like, he's got like little spurs or something there maybe these boots can also provide their own like gravitational oh weight or mm -hmm. i really want him to have something this big giant pack Gareth in chat says he needs a water bottle because he needs to hydrate, stretch, and save. Just as we all do. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Saving. <laughs> um, let's see here. Maybe he'll have... This will be his water bottle. Maybe he'll have... Right, just kind of canteen things. I'll have to figure out how those hang. It's not a very good job. But <laughs> <laughs> Got some carabiner kind of clips sense. and such. Yes, exactly. Just kind of throw some extra stuff on there for now. And I kind of liked this idea of kind of hands I 
Isra in chat, I'm, again, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, um, says, what if the little tubes on his belt can hold samples and be placed into the compass to locate those samples? Wow, that is really cool. That's like like a sample GPS locator. So I like fancy. That. I like that. Here, this will be the little spots you can put There you in. go. <laughs> Perfect. Great, great idea. The arms are looking like bendy straws right now. I kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Kind of, his pack kind of looks like a juice box. <laughs> oh my gosh, box. yes, <laughs> yes. It's exactly what I was going for. It was the plan all along. Yeah, it's a giant juice box. That's how he hydrates. Yeah, there you go. It's like his camel pack. Basically, I mean, you could just have, you know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Holy moly. All right, got a lot going on here now. <laughs> okay, that's pretty silly. Let's see here. This is what happens when you brainstorm on a live stream. <laughs> yes, I know. It'll all come together yes. when you guys aren't watching. And then I will show you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, this is super exciting. I mean, this is this is more fun than uh, I thought it'd be. So totally digging it. I'll have to figure out because I don't have a ton of time, but I'll have to figure out the scale of this. Make sure it's not not messing up with the no, not messing with the uh, with his his design. Um, yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. Some little, some buttons, some little knobs. Let's see. And again, I just want to remind everyone in the YouTube chat, if you would like to uh, have any questions answered or uh, just want to come hang out with us in chat, head over to behance.net slash Adobe Live because that is the chat that we are currently reading. I cannot uh, read or see the um, YouTube chat right now. So if you'd like to head over to Behance, we can all hang out together. That would be great. Main party is over on Behance. Okay. It's got like a, a hook. <laughs> <laughs> he's gotta he's gotta just like pick up things with it yeah. just like, yeah. or, like or and maybe that's uh, yeah some like maybe. scissors to chop things you know he's got plants. different attachments mm -hmm. you know he's gonna have i'm sure he'll have like a buzz saw or something you know oh yeah lots of tools to cut. yeah he'll have all kinds of things all right he's he's backed out i think he's ready to go He's pretty strong. Holding I mean, this. yeah, this guy is, this is impressive. I'm impressed with his strength. I don't know. God, do you put, do you put a... Or maybe he has some, some kind of like anti-gravity measure on mm. his pack to make it lighter. I wish I had one of those. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I like, yeah, I, I know. I feel like my, my hips and my Shoulder, just like holding my my kid all the time. Yeah. Like, oh my god! It's like just carry me everywhere, Dad. So, so heavy. All right. Well, I think that's pretty cool. We'll have to look at that more in between streams here. But I think we got pretty darn far. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, so let's see. So the items. Yeah, probably what I'll do. I mean, I could just explore other tools that you would have. Let's see. 
Because probably what I'll do is I will develop this and I'll go ahead and do a, I'll do a final sketch between now and tomorrow morning. Sure. So that when we get, when we start tomorrow morning, he'll be, uh, he'll be ready to go. And we can just do a bunch of fun stuff of either developing more tools, um, possibly doing uh, some close-ups of the tools if we want. Those are always great for uh, character sheets. Um, some exploration of that. Maybe uh, I'd definitely uh, do some um, expressions um, and some acting moments, some interactions with environment, maybe draw a few crazy little aliens. So very cool. Uh, Steven chat has named the lizard. He says that uh, the lizard's name is Stanley. And he also says that uh, the lizard would be adept at climbing trees and picking fruit for Dr. Suzuki here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. Stanley. Stanley. Yeah, like Stanley's some crazy hair. Let's see. Isra in chat says the huge backpack that weighs like nothing. Every artist's dream. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. It's true though. Like, how many story elements can I put on there? <laughs> it's probably gonna need a shovel now. Yeah. Oh, gosh. What else does this guy need? An item for every situation. Yes, every single one. I'm like trying to even think where I could put, you know what, maybe this. Steve just said backpack design copyrighted by Inspector Gadget. <laughs> <laughs> maybe those are his guys, binoculars. All right, let's see. Very cool. I think I'm going to, so we don't have a ton of time left. I'm just going to start um, doing a final, final body sketch, or at least show you guys a little bit of kind of how I do that. Yeah, we got about 10-ish minutes left, give yeah, or take so, few. Yeah, let's we'll start just doing some, doing some final drawing stuff. Let's see, we could probably make these guys bigger too. Um, let's see. Decent sized sketch to work off of. Okay. So then I'm going to move it to black. Um, I could probably keep the same brush. It, for me, it doesn't always matter that much. I mean, if I wanted it to look inked, I would use some different ink brushes, but I actually really like this brush because it, it definitely feels like pencil, almost mm -hmm. like a soft, like 6B or something like bordering into charcoal. Mm -hmm. um, so it has like enough um, uh, texture that it kind of, it just, it makes it feel a little bit better where if I was to use just like a round brush or ink brush, it, it kind of doesn't have that same, same vibe. I mean, I could show this, I'm sure I could show this to somebody in a certain way and you probably wouldn't be able to tell if it was digital or, yeah, uh, which I love. I don't, you know, the, the less the computer screen um, kind of interferes with the viewer, the better. You know, yeah, it's a great, obviously it's a great way to, to make art and view art, but I mean, nothing beats seeing art in person. That's the one thing the pandemic's kind of really messed with a little bit. Um, I would say if you ever get a chance, always go see the art out in the galleries, mm -hmm. printed, painted. I mean, there's just, you, you're not going to. You just can't see it any other way, really. It's going to have the same kind of impact. Let's see. It's 
also always really fun, especially when you've never really done it before is being able to see your art in print for the first time, your own art. If you've oh, always yeah. been a digital artist, it's just like, wow, it's actually a physical piece in the real world. It almost kind of doesn't even feel real until it's printed sometimes. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, I th that was a big thing for me. I mean, I, I think there was probably a period of a couple of years where I just didn't get my stuff printed and was doing all these projects and you know, they're like, Oh yeah, we'll send you the print. Well, you know, all these people were like in contracts and stuff. I never get them. Oh. So I end up, you know, I've got all these, all this work. And I was like, I've never seen that off of yeah. my computer screen. And then you finally see it and you're like, Oh my God, it's either like, Oh my God, it's beautiful. Or it's like, Oh, look at those <laughs> pixels that I oh, missed. No. Like, I did not see that. Yeah. That was not on my screen. Yeah. As the artist, you're the one that's always going to see the most flaws in it too. So sometimes, oh, yeah. sometimes I'll have a client that's so, so, so happy with a, with a print and I'm just looking at it like, oh no, the color's so bad, <laughs> but they <Yeah>. love it. <laughs> yeah. Please don't notice. Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it took a while to get used to kind of like drawing because I, I used to draw on a um oops I didn't mean to touch that I used to draw just on the intuos mm -hmm. um you know and you're drawing like this the whole time and it's such a weird experience because you're not actually looking where you're drawing you're just looking at this little reticle moving around mm -hmm. on the screen um and I know some people swear by it like I, I still know some artists that that's kind of how they start. And like, that's what they use still. That's me. Like, yeah. I they still like use refuse. an into us. Yep. Yeah. Like, like it just makes more sense. Like you can, your hands not in the way, like, um, but once I, once I was able to get a Cintiq and like, so I was like, Oh, this is, just, this is what I want. Yeah, I've been using an Intuos Pro pretty much my entire career. And the couple of times that I used a Cintiq, it was so strange, such a strange experience because I actually drew worse on the Cintiq than I do on the Intuos. Yeah, I it guess took it's, me. It's just what it I'm It took used me like to, a month. Yeah. Yeah, it took me like a, to really like, because at first I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. And like, I, and I'd been so used to drawing on the Intuos for years. And I was like, I don't know. And I, you know, put the money in i was like i don't even know if i want to keep this yeah and then i think at a certain point it just clicked and i was like okay okay like and and then since then i i just enjoy it more like i just it makes me feel like i'm drawing on paper now because i'm just gotten so used to that sensation but yeah i remember in the beginnings it just i was like uh eh. I don't know if this is worth it. <laughs> yeah, I recently got my first iPad, like probably about six months ago. And so it's kind of similar in a way of my, my first experience of drawing on a Cintiq is I'm finally actually drawing on a screen now. But um, I actually really do enjoy drawing on the iPad now. Um, I I'm actually feel like I enjoy sketching on the iPad and then coloring on the Intuos. So I am always constantly swapping back and forth. Oh yeah, I, I, uh, I'm constantly rotating. I, I usually do my sketching, same sketching on the iPad. I've got this smaller space to work in. Um, it feels more deliberate. I don't have a computer screen distracting me with mm -hmm. all the things like it's just, it's feels like a little sketchbook and I'm terrible yeah. at keeping sketchbooks. Me too. Like I would just be tearing paper out <laughs> and they're like, well, where's your sketchbook? I'm like, I don't know. I don't have one. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's just like scattered all across, like inside my backpack, like crumpled yeah. up places. Like <laughs> On a napkin, um, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I just, the iPads are kind of the first time where I'm like, wow, this is like, I'm actually keeping this as a, kind of like a sketchbook. It's great. And you can just, there's so many programs you can rotate through. I yeah. mean, uh, just uh, beyond Adobe's suite as well, you know, like being able to uh, to use Procreate or Clip mm -hmm. Studio and then bring it back into Photoshop. Um, I'm definitely thankful all of those things can work together and yeah. I don't have to, you know. 
because they, you know, Adobe definitely could have not made that compatible, but I'm glad everything is. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Sam Peterson says, same, my main tablet is an Intuos. Um, Michael says, I have a medium Intuos for over a decade and I've never gotten used to it. Always get hand cramps. Oh man, that's awful. <laughs> yeah, um, that's, yeah. 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 Gareth says, I swap between an Intuos and a Wacom One pen display. Oh, I've heard good things about the Wacom One. I've never personally tried it before, but um, I've heard a lot of artists really like it. Is that... What's the difference with that one? I think that if I'm if I'm thinking of the right tablet, I'm pretty sure it's the less expensive screen okay. tablet. It's similar okay. to a Cintiq, but it's less expensive. I'm fairly certain. Okay. Yeah, I I feel like I was looking looking at it, and uh, I, I remember being like I remember because I hadn't bought one in a while. And I was like, what are all these different versions Oh my gosh, now? I know. They have a bazillion of them now. <laughs> I feel like I went to, it was Comic Con, like I think 2019, I guess. Um, and they were there and, or was it? No, it was a Lightbox, Lightbox Expo mm, mm -hmm. uh, here in uh, Pasadena with uh, ran by Bobby Chu. Um, and Wacken was here and they had, all the different um they had like 10 different ones i was like when did this happen yeah <laughs> which i guess is good because it kind of made it way more accessible for a lot of people yeah. like before it's like well you either pay a thousand dollars or like three thousand know, dollars yeah I can't. can i try one out for a while yeah Okay. Uh, Steven chat says Hueyon is half the price of Wacom and it's just as good. I have heard pretty good things about Hueyon. Again, I've never personally used them. The only tablets that I've ever used are a, an Intuos back before the Pro even existed, just a regular Intuos and then Intuos Pro. And I've had like a couple of those, but I've had really good experience with the Intuos. Uh, they usually last quite a while, like five or seven years for me at least. Yeah, I mean this. I mean the Cintiq that I I had the 13 HD, and I used that for six years, and I was like, I need a bigger surface. And yeah. And eventually the cord the cord died on me, and I didn't really know it. Like I couldn't figure out what was going on, and I had tried replacing it, it still wasn't working, and so I ended up just like diving deep and I got the 24 inch pro oh, wow. and when I first got it I was and I got the other one too I got the 16 16 inch one that's not the pro that's and I got the pro and I was like this is too big I was like I don't think I want this I don't think and I started using it and I was like oh <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> so now I before I'd I'd be working on my comic book or anything, and I'm like zoomed in on these this little 13 inch screen, and I can only see so much. And now with this, that's why I was telling me if I need to zoom in, tell me because I can see so much of the canvas now, right. and it feels like I'm drawing on paper. I'm like using like oh I'm using like oh, big arm strokes and yeah. stuff. It's not just like <laughs> this tiny little noodling because it was killing my wrist. So I, it feels much better now and. So, but yeah, it's a lot of money. Don't, do not buy it if you don't need it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. All right. Well, this has Oof. been a really fun stream, Chris. And thank you all, everyone in chat for giving us all these fun ideas. It's, it's always just a really fun time brainstorming and coming up with all different kinds of things um, with, with viewers. Um, lots of different things that you wouldn't have been able to think of on your own. That's one of my favorite parts of live streamer artwork. It's always so much fun. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us. Chris, if you would like to be able to tell chat like where they can find you um, the best on social media, like your Instagram or your portfolio or anything like that. Um, yeah, Instagram is the underscore Blackstock, B-L-A-C-K-S-T-O-C-K. -C -C and then uh, my website is theblackstock.com. Awesome. Um, and from there, you can find links for all the other stuff. So yeah, come, come say hi, slip into my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> all right 
<laughs> well, thank you guys again so much for jo joining. Everyone saying thanks, Chris. It looks it looks awesome. It's turned out great. Great times. Everyone seems to have really loved the chat, the yeah. chatting and the stream. Um, Excited about to tomorrow. See, yeah, I can't wait to yeah. see the final sketch. Um, thank you all so much for joining and we will see you tomorrow. Don't forget to stick around for Claudie with the uh, uh, AI Daily Creative Challenge coming up next. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you.